Good evening. It's seven o'clock. Let me tell you something. It's uh, six forty. Quad <laughs> twenty of seven. Six forty. Six forty. Uh, we have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Chris Sawicki. Hi there. Um, I'm here on behalf probably of CRB Realty, who owns the White House at 189 in front of our potential to our planning our tandem bagel. And we're looking at doing a change of use. I spoke with the building inspector and he didn't see any issues. So it's currently a residential the house and we want to change it to commercial and looking at renting it for just some office space. Okay, well you're gonna have to it'll go through it's over a thousand square feet, yes. correct? So you'll need to go for site plan approval. Okay, well, um, he then, told me to come here, so I just yeah, came here. You know, they yep. kind of, you know, you'll, you'll need the uh, the open, uh, how big is the lot? Uh, it's part of the total property with the other commercial space. Oh, oh it's part of? It's part of, yeah, it's on the same property it's part. It's tight. It, it's, a, okay. it's all on the same part. I so it's probably, have, have want this, it's, it's on the same part as the commercial space. Uh, so what's the address? 489 Rossi. <clears throat> the uh, the biggest thing is you'll need to meet the parking requirements on that depending for what you want to use it for. Okay, it's, so it's all need, attached to the same. Yeah, but that the property currently meets two for one parking. Yeah. When you add this commercial space to the existing parking, okay. because we don't know what it's going to be used for. Right at the spot, no matter what, you're going to meet two for one. Right, part. but I think it was in the original plan. Mm -hmm. No, no, okay. no, because it was residential. It was not in, you okay. can, I, we don't need that. Okay. It was residential, so the residential property only needs two parking spaces, and they have that right on their driveway. Okay. So if you're going to purchase that and you're going to turn it into commercial or office space or whatever it is, right. we're just going to rent it, it's just going to be a change of use. Yeah, yeah. but it is, it's going to become commercial, they need to meet two for one parking. If you can't meet two for one parking, you can always go to the TDR, uh, which probably is very expensive for what you want to do. Right. But it's a possibility. Um, okay. So without knowing all the details of the property, just realize that if it's a, uh, say it's a 1,500 square foot building, I don't know how it's like taken. It number. says 1,600 on there, yeah. Okay, so 1,600, so you need 3,200 square feet of parking. Do so you do both floors or just one floor? Depending. If it's, are you going to use both floors for commercial? Yes. Okay, probably. so then you'll need. Because you can't. I mean, otherwise you can't. Say probably not. Huh? <laughs> probably yeah. not. Is, is it 1600 per floor or 1600? No, 1600 total. Total, yeah, total. okay. So if you use both floors, that's 3200 square feet of additional parking. Oh, no, it's, I'm sorry, it's 1600 for the whole house, so 800 right. per floor. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, right. So yeah. 1600 total square feet of the building yeah. means you need 3200 square feet of additional parking on the property. Okay. Maybe you have it. I don't know off the top of my head how much. Excess there was. It's all okay. So if you use the upstairs you, you for storage or something, you know. you know, if you may, if you use the upstairs for office space, just realize you you talk to building inspector. Is it about the weight limits and everything? Well, I don't know, but also handicap accessibility. accessibility. You know, I don't know. Those are all details that the building inspector will yeah, be yeah. covered with. Yeah. Not, that's I not our to, yeah. that's not our jurisdiction. Okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank um, but uh, just be aware of what would what would be required. Okay. Okay. So basically the parking thing again. Parking is the concern. You probably have the open space because there's a, there's a fair amount of green space on the property. Yeah. Um, um, because it's already part of the property, there's already the green space probably was already included with that. Right. So I don't think the green space is a concern as much as the parking is a concern. Okay. So just go verify that's, the parking. You know, so that's okay. what it is. All right. And then site plan approval typically if you you need to get somebody to uh, prepare the drawings and stuff like that to do that. Normally, to the date that you apply, if everything is in order, to the date that is done, if you apply on a first Tuesday of the month, depending on our load, we could handle a public hearing one month later, the first Tuesday of the following month. If everything is in order, you get approval, 20-day appeal period, so it's figure about a seven-week turnaround time if everything was correct. Okay. Okay. And there's, you know, several firms around that do that kind of stuff. Okay. I understand. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Philip Myers and Jessica okay. Grassmere. Yes. Stand up. Stand up here. Um, hello, everyone. I am currently in the due diligence period of um, potentially purchasing the property at 35 Lawrence Plain Road, um, the old 
uh, Southern New England Spice Company. Um, the whole hoping, building? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm hoping to get um, a quick determination uh, about the change of use. Um, and copy this uh, project review. Um, we operate the Shaolin Kung Fu Center of Hadley. Um, the what? The Shaolin Kung Fu Center. What's that? Um, it's, down, it's a martial arts school. Okay. Down, uh, Mill Valley Road. Um, and we're planning to operate uh, from this facility. So we want to do a quick, uh, quick uh, review. Yeah. So you may, okay, keep going. Um, so I believe the property um, right now is um, it's in the list. He didn't see any issues. So it's currently a residential the house, and we want to change it to commercial, looking at renting it for just some office space. Okay, well, you're going to have to go through, it's over a thousand square feet, yes. correct? So you'll need to go for site plan approval. Okay, well, um, he the, told me to come here, so I just yeah, came here. You know, they yep. kind of, you know, you'll need the uh, the open, uh, how big is the lot? Uh, it's part of the total property with the other commercial space. Oh, oh it's part of? It's part of, yeah, it's on the same property it's part. Tight. It, it's tight. Okay. It's all on the same part. I so it's probably, it's on the same card as the commercial space. Uh, so what's the address? 489 Rossi. <coughs> the, uh, the biggest thing is you'll need to meet the parking requirements on that depending for what you want to use it for. Okay. Okay, it's so it's all need, attached to the same. Yeah, but that the property currently meets two for one parking. Yeah. When you add this commercial space to the existing parking, okay. because we don't know what it's going to be used for, right at the spot, no matter what, you're going to meet two for one parking. Right, but I think it was in the original plan. Mm -hmm. No. No. Okay. No, because it was residential. It was not in, you okay. know, we don't need that. Okay. It was residential, so the residential property only needs two parking spaces, and they have that right on their driveway. Okay. So if you're going to purchase that, and you're going to turn it into commercial or office space or whatever it is. Right. We're just going to rent. It's just going to be a change of use. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's going to become commercial. It need to meet two for one parking. And if you can't meet two for one parking, you can always go to the TDR, uh, which probably is very expensive for what you want to do. Right. But it's a possibility. Um, okay. So without knowing all the details of the property, just realize that if it's a, uh, say it's a 1,500 square foot building, I don't know how it's like taking It says 1600 on there, yeah. Okay, so 1600, so you need 3200 square feet of parking. Do you do both floors or just one floor? Depending. If it's, are you going to use both floors for commercial? I guess. Okay, well, so then you'll need. Because you can't, I mean, otherwise you can't. Say probably not. Huh? <laughs> probably yeah. not. Is, is it 1600 per floor or 1600? No, 1600 total. Total, yeah, total. okay. So if you use both floors, that's 3200 square feet of additional parking. Oh, no, it's, I'm sorry, it's 1,600 for the whole house, so 800 right. per floor. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Right, so 1,600 total square feet of the building yeah. means you need 3,200 square feet of additional parking on the property. Okay. Maybe you have it. I don't know off the top of my head how much excess there was. It's all. Okay. So you know, if you use the upstairs you, you get, for storage or something. Yeah. You know, if you may, if you use the upstairs for office space, just realize you're, you're talking to building inspector. Yeah, about the weight limits and everything. What, I don't know, but also handicap accessibility. accessibility. You know, I don't know. Those are all details that the building inspector will yeah, be yeah. covered with. Yeah. Not, that's not our, to, yeah. that's not our jurisdiction. Okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank um, but uh, just be aware of what would, what would be required. Okay. Okay. So basically the parking thing again. Parking is a concern. You probably have the open space because there's, there's, there's a fair amount of green space on the property. Yeah. Um, um, because it's already part of the property, there's already, the green space probably was already included with that. Right. So I don't think the green space is a concern as much as the parking is a concern. Okay. So just go verify that's, the parking. You know. So that's okay. right. Yeah. All right. And then site plan approval typically if you you need to get somebody to uh, prepare the drawings and stuff like that to do that. Normally to the date that you apply, if everything is in order to the date that is done, if you apply on a first Tuesday of the month. Depending on our load, we could handle a public hearing one month later, the first Tuesday of the following month. If everything is in order, we get approval, 20-day appeal period, so it's a figure about a seven-week turnaround time if everything was correct. Okay. Okay. I understand. And there's, you know, several firms around that do that kind of stuff. Okay. I understand. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Bill Myers and Jessica okay. Grassmere. Yes. Same. Up here, um, but
I am currently in the due diligence period of um, potentially purchasing the property at 35 Lawrence Plain Road, um, the old uh, Southern New England Spice Company. Um, the whole hoping, building? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm hoping to get um, a quick determination uh, about the change of use. Um, I have a copy of this uh, project review. Um, we operate the Shaolin Kung Fu Center of Hadley. Um, the what? The Shaolin Kung Fu Center. Um, down, it's a martial arts school. Okay. Uh, not know about here. Um, and we're planning to operate uh, from this facility. So we want to do a quick, uh, quick uh, review. Yeah. So you may, okay, keep going. Um, so I believe the property um, right now is um, it's in the limited business zone. No. Uh, no local business zone. Local business zone. Yes. Local business zone. Here. Here. Okay, I keep going. So, and um, so it's zoned. Uh, I think they have a. Um, permit to use as a retail space, and we want a change of use to use it for the martial arts and fitness uh, center. Um, Probably didn't list something like that as a specific business. The intensity is going to be modest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it could fall under uh, retail business or personal and consumer service establishment. Yeah, it, 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 this is a little bit of a different item entirely. Yeah. Thinking you probably fall under the personal and consumer service establishment. Okay. Which for the local business district is special permit for the planning board. Okay, so what is a special permit? Mm -hmm. So you've already the site has already gone through site plan approval. It has. Yeah. That's all set from when it, when it was built when it was years built. ago. Yeah. And I have copies of the okay. every zone. Where is the spice company mm -hmm. going to go? They go to I don't know where they're going. Yeah, they haven't actually. Okay. Built that. Yeah. So if you do decide to get, you need a special permit, but it would be a permitted use from what we can tell with a special permit for this planning board. Okay. So, um, is this a full uh, hearing? It's a full. It's a, it's a it's a public it's a public hearing process. Okay. So you need to apply, mm -hmm. um, schedule public hearing. The butters are notified. Um, assuming that you get approval, there's a 20-day appeal period, okay. nobody appeals, 21st day, you theoretically move in. Okay. Um, all right, great. So um, the application process uh, for this first step would First be step is, uh, because we already gone through site plan approval, mm -hmm. the, the application process, at least for you, Martial arts. We do. Um, it's Chinese martial arts. It's uh, Shaolin Kung Fu. Um, you know, it's a pretty diverse okay. size. This is a very pretty generic form. What you're doing, That's where you're located, right. uh, what's yeah. going on, and um, so it's not. This would really be. Uh, you don't need any engineering approval or design or anything. Just sort of filling out the form, probably. Yeah. And so this this package so probably. Okay. Plenty for the town clerk to, you know, one, one or two okay. of those is all we need. And right. basically, if you could put up a, uh, a paragraph together describing, like, uh, which what you do, right? So when we put the apple, we put the application out to the neighbors and to the newspaper. We kind of will explain what you want to do and what it's about. And then we have the public hearing. And like okay. I heard me just talk to the, yeah. um, Mr. Zwicky mm -hmm. about a, you know, about a month, month from the time that you applied to get the public hearing. Okay. Yeah, signage. We yeah. need yeah. signage. Yeah, they. Um, you know, it's uh, we're not going to change 
know much about the sign other than putting a logo on it. Okay. Um, the current we, need, we, well, no. we would we would need two lists a, a list of abutters mm -hmm. within okay. 300 feet of the property on the labels or on both, whichever is easier for you. Okay. Um, two sets. Because yeah. we're after we get one, one gets mailed out in public the, hearing. Yeah, yeah. When the approval is given, another set gets mailed out to the abutter that has been that has been approved. That is okay, great. And that's it. Okay. And then I file that with the town clerk. No, you clerk. file. Come back to this. We meet the first or third Tuesday of every month. Bring back that information and file it here because we schedule public hearings and all the rest of the stuff. Okay, there he is. This right. And okay. we, we, re we review for completeness. If you yeah. file an incomplete application with the town gotcha. clerk, you gotcha. won't go anywhere for a long yeah, time. Yeah, you get delayed. I you press the file here. We take a look, make sure everything is, is, is there. And we schedule the public hearings. All you have to do is bring the paperwork here for the initial filing, though, okay. like I just said. And uh, go forward with that. Right. We'll go for it from there. So, really, just. Um, I just need to get the addresses of the. Yeah, you get that. You can get that in the assessor's that. office. Yeah. All right. So we have most of the packets already. So that should be a pretty simple process. Okay. Okay. All right. Good well, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Come here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, here with uh, the letter from Refresh your memory. This is uh, regarding. 216 Russell Street, and uh, there is no pavement right now, it's just gravel, which is kind of uh, creating a mess. So, we want to just put a small you know, parking space, and we wanted a letter from Virtual Design to assure that there would be no impact of water going to the Route 9. So, that's what we want. So, I'm going to ask you to tell me about Yeah. Is that the car wash? Yeah, I was proposing it, but for now I'm just waiting for it. Okay, so. But for now it's just two uh, offices. Okay. And then I call you call that a driveway? Yes. Okay. Letter basically say it basically says that the uh, Berkshire design has visited the site of 216 Russell Street to review the topography and drainage patterns. The site contains two small commercial buildings and an irregularly surfaced stone parking area to the west of the building. A sidewalk runs along the front of the parcel, which is lower in elevation than the site and lower than Russell Street. The catch basin exists on a sidewalk and is a low point for drainage between parcel the parcel and Russell Street. Um, a green lawn area to the west of the building and stone parking area is lower than Russell Street and receives runoff from the site. It is proposed to provide a paved parking lot for the few cars in place of the stone area. The surface of the paved parking area can be pitched westward to the existing low green area lawn runoff where runoff currently flows. Drainage patterns can be mimicked in this manner to prevent runoff into, from flowing toward Russell Street. In my opinion, there is no, the site can be graded so that one up will not enter Russell Street. Signed, Michael U. Berkshire Design. Okay. Okay. So I'll make a motion to waive site plan approval. Second. Slightly that the wedding, the paving be done in accordance with the Berkshire design letter of November 5th. Okay. Simple enough. Two seconds change. One second. What was the date of the letter? 11 5 today. 
Motion. Okay. okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Yeah. Now we have some. We have some minor paperwork because we've got in trouble for not doing this before, and for people ex ex expecting that. Uh, Coming to the planning board, they were using that as a yeah. sure off for everything. Two copies of that. We are not the oh. all and all. So, <clears throat> what we are doing here is, as a condition of waiving site plan approval, we are going to <coughs> give you our frequently asked questions of what site plan approval is and what it isn't. And we're going to ask you to sign one copy to acknowledge that you received it. And you can take the other copy with you. Attach it to the yeah. What I'll do, flyer. Just for your information, what I'm doing, what I will do is, building is this is yours. Um, I will make a copy of this and keep one for the planning board, and we give this stuff to the building inspector so that he'll know what we've done. So when you go to see him tomorrow, he'll have this in his mailbox, and he know that you can go forward. Okay. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you. Good luck, Mr. Heiser. Yes, sir. Two things to discuss this evening. Item number one would be from the last meeting when I was here regarding Exotic Auto at 373 Three. River Drive. Uh, there was not enough, there was not a quorum to sign a motion that you made. Why don't so, you explain to Joe what you want to do so he understands? Now I have to remember. So, Exotic Auto wants to put. Uh, right there. That's what we're. That's what you're approving. Okay. Can you read my writing? Yes. To further amend special permit application, no freestanding sign. One sign on the building, maximum 40 square feet. Stockade fence east side with arbor vitae on outer east side and remove arbor vitae on northerly side. So. There's a row of arbor vitae. So it comes along the back of the building, then it comes down along Cummins Road for two bushes or something like that. He needs the place to put propane tanks. So he suggested that he take down half the arborvitaes and put up a stockade fence, but that uh, didn't fly. Uh, so it was determined that he would put the stockade fence inside the existing arborvitae to protect the propane tanks and take the two or however many bushes there are on Cummins Road so that the propane delivery truck can get into there and uh, fill the tanks. The other item was when we originally had site plan approval, there was a street sign in the corner in the, in the green space, and he since decided that he doesn't need that, he's going to put one, one sign on the building. Is that green space, the rock, rock pile? Well, it's, let's call it open space, is that what? Right. It, it's not, well, he's going to plant something in there, Joe. He's just trying to, if he's building it up to put soil in there, I don't know what he's going to put in there, but he, he intends to plant something. So we're not interfering with the, is that an ongoing lawsuit or has it been settled? I don't believe it's been settled, no, and, no. and from what when, I understand. When the lawsuit has come up once before with Attorney Bard, we asked him about getting in the middle of it, yeah. and he said, you should proceed as though the lawsuit didn't exist because the lawsuit is basically out of your out of your control right now. Okay. I, I was going to call him on this one, but that, no, that makes that him. makes sense. I think. Don't, don't. Yeah. But this is what he, what he has. He's got bushes along the back of the building and came down here. This is where he wants to put the propane tanks. Yeah. So he's going to put a stockade fence inside and along here to get access. And these arbor are going to be removed, but these are going to remain. That's what that's what the, that's what that's about. Yeah. That's uh, over, over So the butters are set uh, satisfied, or they weren't even notified. This is no big deal because they're not going to. They're not. Gonna, they won't see any difference in the back here. Okay. And there's a less. There's a. There's less signs being proposed with one sign in the building that is going to look like that, mm -hmm. as opposed to anything else. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think that. No sign. No, he shuts the lights off at night, does he not? No. Those lights, especially the soffit lights, that 
Yeah, there's a lot of softer light that shine down, and when you go by at night, it's really lit up. The side building is okay, but these kind of light up a little bit, a okay. lot. Well, he, he and I talked about this the other day, and he has dimmers on those. Okay. So he wanted, uh, he's trying to get the right intensity, so I'm sure if I tell him they're too bright, he will. Yeah, the one, the it's one, white light. I the ones on the side, like I said, I, I didn't think, though, because they were a little bit further away, but these are fairly close to River Drive. Okay. I thought they were a little bit bright, because I went by there at like 8.30, and he with the lights were on the side, so I might have still been working, so I thought well, he's working anyway, <coughs> that's one thing. But when he leaves, they probably should be dimmed. <coughs> I, will okay. tell him. I will tell him that. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure that if you know anything that comes up here, you'd be more than willing to. The lights on the north side are large windows, so I don't know if he can cover those. If he's going to be working at night, it's just it lights up the whole area. There. From know. the inside out, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll tell him. Okay. Would you just note that I am not participating? Great yeah. job on that building. It's a heck of an improvement. Uh, All right. Quite nice. Um, make a motion to amend for to. A waiver of further amendment of site plan approval in that uh, for, this is for 373 River Drive. No freestanding sign, one sign on building, max 40 square feet. A stockade fence on the east side with Arbor Whitey on the outer east side and remove the Arbor Whitey on the northerly side. No, the other way around, right? No, it's the, on the, nor the northerly side is the Cummins Road side. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's okay. where you would access. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's the motion. Which might impact that. No, that that's that's behind the building. Right, but it would be viewed from the the person who's suing him to the north, right? Mm, not no. really. His the the person who's suing to the north house is here. The entrance is would be here. He could maybe see, but he wouldn't be looking down it. He by any stretch. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And there'd be a there'd be a stockade fence there at right. the end. I'll suck it on a motion. Okay, any other discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes with uh, Mr. Dwyer not participating. Where is zero one? Probably going to be one of many, not just when they. This is uh, 241 Russell Street, which is the Aegis building. We're going to have a parking issue when they widen it now. Okay. And Lisa and I were talking about this, and I thought, you know what? I just need to go talk to these to you people and see what your thoughts might be on how you are going to be willing to allow some sort of a remedy for this issue when it comes up not only here but in a multitude of places. So what you see before you is the yellow highlight is the existing parking and the pink is a potential new parking but all of it's in the 50 foot front yard so I, I, I'm really here to, to try to feel you guys out as to how much are they taking uh, maybe 16 or 18 feet potentially we don't we don't really know right now so how much is the right of way going to ex well, you, because how much is the right of way going to extend beyond that you don't know right now the I believe the right of way is 49 and a half feet wide. And at that meeting they had, they said it was going to be 68. 68. Feet wide. Feet wide. Remember that. There is a, the, um, the engineering drawings that they had, uh, not the, the pretty picture ones, have a table of proposed takings in them. Do you have those? Uh, I, don't have access. I don't have it in my office or anything like that. But I have I have a Dropbox link to it. Okay. So but I, I, I'm, okay. I'm more here in theory than in reality what, no, right no, now. Who, where's the 50 foot setback? Pretty, pretty right much now. the front of the house. In the 50 foot. Or the front of the building. So 50 foot. What, what, what's the problem? 
No parking no, in the no, front no, here. No, no, no. She has parking in the front right now. Right. And, and she's going to have, if you turn, is this the same number of, if there's more spaces here now? <coughs> there, there is more here now. Why is that? Just, I'm, again, I'm trying to understand how this is going to work. So are you, if whatever's here, that's is in, the, is, is in the front yard right now. Right. And you're going to turn it 90 degrees. Okay. And so, and, and you kept it the same number of spaces. So if I did do that, then there's no issue. Same spaces in the front yard. Okay. And it's beyond your control. So it's so, not the God. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not something that we can say you can't do that because that's going to well, shoot everybody in the foot. Yeah. Right. Right. The other part of it is that the uh, preference for no parking on 50 foot front yard setback is within site plan approval. So that's within our discretion to waive. Right. Okay. Um, but that's not a that's not a hard fast rule, okay. uh, as opposed to the other sections of the bylaw that right. need a variance. Um, however, um, I think Jim's point is that if you're if you have six spaces now, just as a number, right. and you rotate them 90 degrees, and you have six spaces that are still in the front yard. Question is, so what? Now, if you want to increase them to 10 spaces, that's a different story. Why do you want now 10? Why do you want four more than you have today? Mm -hmm. Because Three. my business is growing. Okay. Then you should, then, then, then we're going to have to come for site plan approval to try to get... For your business or her business? For her business. TDR. Well, she, she, I mean, she doesn't... She may be limited on what she can do there. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, the whole nature of Route 9 is changing. It's going to change. So we're going to have to take a hard look at that. Well, your point is a good one in that Randy is almost, seems to me, He's looking for a blanket exemption. No, no, no. no I never okay, seen that I, know, no. I know, I know. So I think we're going to have to examine each case individually. And I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand what the possibilities are here yeah. because she definitely needs more parking than she's got. So I'm trying to come up with a way to make it work within the with 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 not within the 50-foot front yard, and she doesn't really have any space for that to make it worthwhile. So I'm trying to design something, and I thought, well, I don't want to design something and then come back and say, oh, we're going to, do, we're going to try to do this and then tear up everything she just well, did and do it all over again. How can we suggest that the 50-foot setback is going to be applicable to anybody on Route 9 who has this problem? You can't. It's, the state has done it to them. Well, it, 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 we, 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 it's fairness. But, but it, the it other is, part of it, I think, is that there are, you know, if, if hypothetically this was an empty lot and someone came to us with the proposal to set up this building with parking in the 50-foot front yard setback to meet their needs, we might say the lot is too small for what you want to do. If it, new, if, it if it were new construction, were new. yeah, exactly. Uh, but you know, think well, you know, with Aegis, it went, it yeah. what double, tripled the size Pretty much. Yeah. when they expanded, and you know, at some point, we have to have that conversation with any developer or any property owner who comes in that I, I, I want to add on, I need more space, and, and that leaves me with less room for parking. That's but in a sense, they're grandfathered because they already did it. Anybody new coming in. Well, certainly they're grandfathered for six spaces. Whatever it is. Yeah, or yeah. whatever it is. Right. Uh, right. Whether you get more, uh, that's that's going to have to be case by case. And yeah. it may be that this is just limiting what can be done on certain lots. Um, okay. And on a case by case basis, I hate to spend people's money, you know, only to find out that there's no way you got, you know, it, it would be allowed. So something like that, if I were to bring a, a reasonable drawing in and, and, and apply and say, this is what we're proposing, if we get granted, we have to prove to you that it'll all work, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, because it could cost tens of thousands of dollars to 
to deal with this and only to find out that it's not going to fly. So, uh, and, and I certainly wouldn't try to come and expect that, okay, I get this beautiful drawing and you guys looked at, oh, I'm going to go tell that you can build all those parking spaces. I understand what the process we have to go through. So it looks like she has five or six spaces in the front right now. Uh, there might be. It's like four. One, one two, three, four. Four, four. Into four. six. So there's four. This is this this is not a parking space anymore in the middle here. I'm assuming that's a. So right. Um, <coughs> yeah. Well, no. What I did was say that's existing. So this pink would all be new. What? One, two. Oh, that's, not a space. that's not a. That's so it's one, two, two three, four. Five, six. Six or seven, whatever. Yes. Whatever the number is. You know, without knowing much about the basics, mm -hmm. I don't think if we if she was denied or made granted the three extra spaces it's gonna make her break the business. If she has a practice problem, it's hard to believe the three spaces would make all that much difference. But let's assume it would. And and I don't know the answer. I understand. Okay, would let's would it we would. And again, we don't have to have the conversation this evening in depth. I just want to understand if it makes sense for me to even attempt to do something or just tell her that well, it, it's not going to happen. Free spaces could mean a lot. I mean, because you, know, you make appointments and you come and you leave. And if they plan on increasing the number of appointments per hour. But, but, but she has all this parking back here. Too, don't forget her so I don't, there's, there's a lot of spaces. But if, she, if she puts these in, what does it do to her green, her open space, her green space? That I'm not certain of. It doesn't look like she'll have. You know, would it be? Could we? Could we say you could put some parking places in the back if people were comfortable to put a couple in? They already have them in the back. No, there's but uh, just put some on. Yeah, there's there's space. I can. No, these I can, are spaces in the back, Joe. Well, no, I know. I know, but uh, those are spaces. No, they're not. Those no, are, they're not. So I, this is a whole. Compilation of a bunch of stuff oh, I was trying okay, to do okay, to show okay. her. So this is not accurate for that. Not for that. There's potential to put two here, but what happened was, and here's an interesting one for you. This is uh, 245, which is Zaradnik's property. Yeah. And I don't know if this is reality, but I was told that when he built his, he was supposed to put a retaining wall here. But what happened is he sloped it all down to here. Oh. So she may, and I mean, if she needs those two parking spaces, she's going to have to put a retaining wall in there. Yes. And so, uh, what in in a situation like that? That 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 that's a private owner. That's a owner to own property owner pro property owner issue. If I'm under, I mean, is there is this site plan uh, approval a zoning issue that after time it it it's grandfathered that yeah. you can't do anything about it? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, well, anyhow. All right, so I will talk with her, see where she wants to go with this, and if she wants to try to move forward, uh, I will come up with something that is a bit more reasonable uh, in terms of scale and whatever uh, to show you guys what she's proposing, and then we can go from there. And as with... Uh, prior person, we'd probably want something from Berkshire Design or some site engineers who could attest that the parking layout change would not adversely affect Route 9. Okay. Well, if, if we, I mean, I envision coming in, talking about it, and then if it looks like it's something that you guys would entertain, I would say at this point we're going to get it engineered <laughs> yeah. so that there's no, yeah. no question that it'll work. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Pico, the HB, yeah. were these just oh. other locations you were? <coughs> yeah. That's yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, right. uh, again, Pichon. Mike Pichon with the HB. I uh, was here before the board last uh, last you? meeting. Presented several changes for uh, for this uh, Adley Senior Center project. Yeah. Um, per, per condition one, we had to come back in front of the board for any, any site plan changes. Uh, the board would not approve those changes, even though you, I believe, agreed that they were non-zoning related uh, until the selectmen approved those changes, and they, I'm here before you to inform you that they have since approved those. you have a letter from them saying they did that or something? Uh, 
I, I don't. You need something in writing? <coughs> I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to take you. I, 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 can anybody attest that it was done? I, I, I have signed the chain. I, I, my phone, I have signed. I, I could forward you the, 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 the signed uh, change orders. That would be perfect. Okay. So we only need proof. We don't need a letter from them saying they approved. All we need is proof that it was done. Okay. You have signed change orders. I'm not with me now. What, what are we talking about? I missed the meeting. Okay. Would you explain what was done? <coughs> yeah. uh, there are four general changes that were made. One being the uh, the tap, the water tap in Route Nine was changed from a tapping sleeping valve to a, a cutting tee for the request of the DPW. Um, different, way, different way they tied it to the water line. Yep. That's already been done. Uh, what, where? What number? Oh, this is the Hadley Senior Center. For this oh. Hadley Senior Center. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Um, the second change was to the north side of the building. We had a two to one slope uh, to a swale. And then from the swale, there was a, a sidewalk uh, adjacent to the building. We reduced the sidewalk width slightly to give, to give a little relief on that slope. Um, it a little easier for, for it to be constructed. Our wheelchair will still fit, though. <coughs> yes. Yep, minimally f uh, four feet wide. Um, the other change was on the south side of the building. We had uh, it originally included some some bollards that circled the entire uh, south end of the building uh, along the sidewalk. It was all flush. Uh, we ve'd it out. Um, come to find out, it didn't really work grade wise with an existing door, so they have to go back in. Uh, so that was one change. So we're what, are, what are bollards? Uh, metal pipes. Oh, I'm not an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> That's fine. I told you right. I'm a poet, not an engineer. And then the second change was uh, further to the south. It was a retaining wall. Uh, in order to keep the existing trees, the wall had to get uh, slightly larger uh, on the south side of the property. Because so that's, it was going to get into the roots. The, the root balls. Right. And because we were doing that, there was also, we eliminated a parking space on that south side of parallel parking space. There was a, a quite a large tree on the, uh, on the corner of the property. So. I mean, I'd have to hold these people up. I mean, we can call somebody at the planning board. I mean, we're not a select board right now and get an answer. No, I, I, no. I watched the meeting. And, yeah. uh, yeah, they, they did go through it, and they also talked out their other concerns with the OPM. Or I thought that was the major concern, the OPM what's, what's problem the number running. Right? What's the number of the senior center, do you know? I thought the big problem was the cost overrun. That was, that was what that's that was the issue. We had. Was, yeah, no, no. The, the issue was was the politicalness of the cost overrun. We had no right. issues with what right. they did. Yeah. No. Forty six minutes. Forty six. And it turned out that that was within their budget with other well, figures. It was, that well, it, was in, it was in their budget, but still, it was an engineer's mistake. The engineer should be paying for it. The town shouldn't be paying for it. So I'd like again, to come again, in under budget. That's, that's, the, the select board has worked it out to good. their satisfaction. Good. Uh, what's the gentleman's name? Mike? Yeah. Yes. Mike? Yeah. Oh, Peach. Sure. Yeah, and at that meeting I submitted the, the plans with changes as well as a, a letter summarizing those changes. So there's a we plumbed a retaining wall on the south side. Yep. Um, what, what were the other ones you mentioned? Uh, water line. Water line. Yep. Uh, additional bollards is the third. And I'll call it slight grading modification on the north side of the property. I was on the north side? <laughs> yes. North side, right? Yes. Narrowed the walkway on the north side, changed the bollards on the south side of the building, retaining wall on the south side of the property building. line, yep. and the water line. Water, water yeah. Okay. That generally yeah. summarizes. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Entertain a motion to approve the changes as presented. I'll make a motion to approve the site changes. I would second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is granted. Thank you. I will, for what it's worth, I'll make a copy and put it in the uh, um, building.
building inspector's mailbox. Do you want one in your mail? Do you need a copy of this at all? Uh, it, yeah, probably. It wouldn't, okay. it wouldn't be a bad idea. All right. You want to email it to me? You want to scan it? What order was easiest? Um, you don't have a. Does the senior center have a mailbox downstairs? I don't think so. I don't know. I'll, I'll get you a copy of something. Yeah, because. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, gentlemen. I hope it's the same as tomorrow. Yeah, you don't need. You don't need it. Not me. Oh, you're yeah. echoing. Yeah. yeah. Eric, okay. <clears throat> and, Last but not least, yes, quick. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks. you. Tom Doubleday. Yeah. Um, I'm looking to uh, convert my uh, barn into a potato storage and uh, renovate it and put an addition on it. And I believe I fall under the uh, farm exemption, and I just wanted to make sure that was the case. Where is that? The 201 River Drive. It's a farming use. Mm -hmm. Farming use now. Yeah. Could be farming use when you're done. Mm -hmm. You are correct. Okay. You need nothing from us. All right. Could you let my heart know, though? Pardon? Let my heart know, though. Okay. But we're going to also, oh, we're, yes. we're going to give you this, and you'll sign a copy and take one. You're, you're granted an exemption from site plan approval because of the exemption, but you still need to comply with everything else in right. building code. And So if you could just sign a copy of that, that you received it, and take one copy with you, please. And the copy, the signature simply says that you've, you've, right. you've received it, okay. not that you agree with it. All right. <laughs> 11-5. Okay. Take that one with you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ken Comia. Hello. I um, messaged the chair and um, Bill yesterday with um, the work that has been completed to date on the um, rules and regulations for the stormwater bylaw. We met with the working group last Wednesday during the day, and um, the staff person that is preparing this. Um, was it last Wednesday? Mm -hmm. No, he met with us. Uh, he, met, he met with the planning board, um, no. conservation and building inspector and highway department. For, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. On these the last Wednesday that we met. Yeah. Uh, I was just kind of teasing you. You said the last Wednesday? Yeah. Like it was a question mark? Or <laughs> yeah. So? Yeah. <laughs> I lose like track of my days. Um, so that's it. I the the thing um, that the board um, should understand is that the bylaw is uh, currently going to be before town meeting on Thursday. Um, as a general bylaw, this would supplement that. Um, as the planning board would have an important role in um, stormwater permit, should you know any of those um, criteria be. Uh, uh, that, that those thresholds be met. Um, Patty is taking these. There's a few changes, a number, a, number, a number of changes that we talked about last week. Yeah. And she is going to make the appropriate changes, and we'll get a clean copy probably, I would guess, next week. Yeah. Okay. Um, what I would suggest, though, I think and it could be part of this next conversation. I don't know if there was any questions regarding the rules and regs. Um, the, the board has seen uh, iterations up to this point. Um, you know, as you know, the, the bylaw was a larger one and it's now parsed down to a smaller one in, in the general bylaw. The, um, the motions at the meeting, I guess, are to remove the, the citation in the zoning bylaw Ken, I, I just got this late this morning. Uh, so, is there something new in here that I should be aware of? No. 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 Okay. no. It's, 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 it's a kind I of a forty-hour rule. Yeah. There, there's there's a number of for what you received before to what we have in front of us is probably no changes. Okay. But we will get a copy. Like I said, last week we went over this. Some suggestions, some changes were made, and. We should be getting a clean copy next week after the zoning bylaw and the general bylaw have been both approved and amended. 
then we will need to post these in the newspaper and adopt the, reg the clean regulations once we get them. At, at a regular public meeting. At a regular planning yeah. board meeting. If there's something wrong. That's just, that publishes the newspaper once or twice, Bill, do you know? I don't recall. I the whole recall. thing? No. no. We, we, need to, we need to publish. We, we, we come up with words. We need to publish a public, public notice of a public okay. hearing yeah. that we're going to adopt regulations. Yes, makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think the important thing um, with this is, uh, you know, as Jim is aware, um, and what I may have discussed at the last meeting, is that there is still no agreement between the wetlands, um, the DEP, and the EPA in regards to some inconsistencies with um, some permitting requirements under the Wetlands Protection Act and under the MS-4. Um, so, Patty has assembled the um, the, the bylaw and the regulations to conform to MS-4. There probably will be discussion after towns are required to be, um, to pass these new MS-4 permits by July 1st to, you know, come up with some um, more uh, aligned uh, permitting process. With that said, um, PVPC is trying to um, uh, find a, a grant um, to uh, review this as a model um, and have it reviewed by engineering staff um, as well as um, legal staff to just ensure that it meets, um, it would meet a future MS-4 and meet a um, WPA and meet a Wetlands Protection Act. Um, but that's going to be later. Um, for right now, the recommendation is to approve the regulations um, so that it supplements your, um, your general bylaw, um, which hopefully will be passed on Thursday. Um, so with that said, I also printed out what I was able to find in regards to planning board rules and regs. Um, Are we moving on from the MS4? Because I had like 10 questions okay. from yep. that. I, I can try to answer. It might okay. be it might be okay. questions for Patty. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah. Okay, ask away. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I have a little list here. On page three, we were deleting the whole builder's acre definition out of there, and I was just wondering, is that because it's defined somewhere else? No, or? we don't use builder's acre. An acre is an acre. But they keep using 40,000 square feet. That's correct. That's what we've been using for the last dozen plus years. So we're using 40,000 square feet as the, as the threshold, as opposed to an acre. Okay. So we're just taking the term builder's acre out. Oh, yes. The, 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 the measurement for which the stormwater bylaw criteria would be applied is defined in the bylaw um, under acre, uh, or under, no. No, it's no. 40,000 square feet. So, yeah, under, so acre and builder's acre are gone. Yes. It's yeah, 40, just use square 40, feet. 40,000 square 40, feet. 40,000 square feet Sorry. is the number we, is, 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 the, is the term we're using. Okay. Right. Okay. And let's see, I had something on page, on page seven, uh, there, under definitions, there's recorded and there's registry of deeds. Is that just a typo, Hamden County, or do ours? Where, 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 are you, where do you see this? I'm on page seven. Yeah. And I see... In the middle of the page, recorded, recorded in the Hamden County Registry of Deeds. Is that just page, page seven? What? What? Are we on the MS four? We're in the regulate. I'm looking through what he just. Are you? Are you in the MS four bylaw? Yes, or? it's on page eight. Oh, um, so the it? version was just handed are out. Oh, I, I've got the old version. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that should be changed oh. to Hampshire. Yeah, and then it's also below that under Registry of Deeds. It's got Hamden as well. Okay. 
You see that, Ken? Yeah. So my page numbers don't. Good, Ken. Yeah. I'm curious, though. If your bylaw currently says that, I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, we'll make sure that it changes. But right, because it didn't <coughs> seem like that would come in from the Ponset. Mm -hmm. So you good? Yeah, because this, I mean, again, this has been um, massaged over two, three, four months of work mm. um, from what your general by or your zoning bylaw had um, in it um, into a, a separate bylaw and rules and regs. Um, so, we'll, but we'll ensure that that changes. Okay. So, just just as a note, um, I printed. I didn't realize you're going to be bringing these nice color ones. I printed out the. Um, what came by email okay. yesterday, and indeed uh, it does go to page seven in that one. So, you know, this is off by half a page, which happens when you're uh, translating between um, fonts on different op operating systems. I also had a general question. I didn't see anyone in here, and this is probably a question more for the board. It says over and over and over, the Stormwater Authority. Who is? What is? We are. We Storm, are. We got this. The Stormwater, Ken can explain this a little bit. Because there's a section called Authority, and it, it talks about it. It doesn't say who that is, so that is us. It's it. I think that's in the uh, definition. The general bylaw. Oh, is it? Says okay. The stormwater. Authority. Yes. Okay. So the planning board is stormwater. Was that, like it was either like page. It was very early in this. There was authority was on page yes. nine. So on the copy I just handed out, yes, it's um, nine. And I didn't see anything there that said it. It just again, it just said stormwater authority. So somewhere the thing is in the, the we take the ball on that. It's in the by the bylaw. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. Who is it going to be? We are. Oh, yeah. It's huge um, Planning Board and Stormwater Authority. <laughs> so if you look at Section 4A on that same page, Section 4? Yeah. A, the Planning Board will serve as the Stormwater Authority. Where it says administration. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. I skimmed over that. Thank you. That answers that question. Um, and right above that, on section three, at the end of paragraph B, uh, it says stormwater management and erosion sediment control bylaw. It seems like everywhere else you're changing it to regulation. I just wanted to make sure that wasn't another case where it should say regulation. Because it seemed like everywhere else the bylaw had been taken out. And no, so so the the so there's a bylaw and there's correct. a regulation, and so this is referring back to the bylaw. Correct. Okay. So right. I'm the general bylaw. I'm not as familiar as you. I wasn't in the yeah the, the task group, but yeah. okay. So that bylaw is that's a broader umbrella. Right. On Thursday, there's a few articles relating to this. The first article is to add a new bylaw, general bylaw section to the town bylaws, stormwater, whatever it's called, the stormwater management. Mm -hmm. upset. The second article on town meeting is to remove. Section 25, I think it's 25. I believe so. From the from the zoning bylaws about stormwater, and we're just going to have a general bylaw referencing stormwater. These regulations will help the various town boards enforce the general bylaw. The storm, the planning board is the general, is a stormwater authority, which means we are the overseer of the bylaw and the regulation. However. The Conservation Commission still has their part to do. The building inspector has their part to do. The DPW has the inspection part to do. And we have our part to do as far as updating the regulations and the bylaw as needed and to apply the bylaw when somebody comes in for site plan approval and stuff like that. But we're not going to really be doing anything different than we do today. It's just a way a, a different 
a little bit different process of what we're going to be using that hopefully will make it a little bit easier. I mean, once these all are adopted, we need to get this information out to the reviewing engineers that the planning board uses. The conservation will be responsible for using, for the, getting these out to their uh, engineers and companies that they use. So, am I correct that the we will no longer need a supermajority to vote a permit? Because it's not a special permit anymore. That's correct. So, it's just a general bylaw, so our permitting would be by majority vote. Correct. For this? Yeah. yeah when it's, when it's, it will, it's no, we are no longer, yeah, they're still in the stormwater permit. Right. Yes. Actually, the thing is that the general bylaw, the zoning bylaws stormwater permit was not a special permit. That's right. Anyway, so that was still only a majority. Yeah. Okay. Right. So really, nothing, nothing, nothing much changed as far as the the vote. No. Okay. Right. Okay. What else did you have? Uh, I had some small stuff. I'll skip over. Then the next one was. I had it on page 12, but it was section 6, so it might be a little further on. The section, the section 6 starts on 12 on ours. All right, and I was looking at uh, under paragraph C, filing application. Okay. So right, right before subparagraph so 1, it says the plan shall contain. Is plan what you want, or should that be the application submission package? I mean, I'm, I wasn't sure if plan hmm. is what you, because then, you know, it, it just seemed like it could be confusing to an applicant. I think it's a good point. I wrote in application submission package. Shall include, and then somewhere they asked, should we I think there was a side comment? Should we include the application in the submission pack? Or if you know, that's splitting hairs, that's really up to you. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I, I maybe yeah. change the words of what, what did you call it? Yeah, I, I, I call it application, application submission, submission package. package. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's nice. I think that, that makes sense. Better term it, that makes sense. It, it, yeah. it clarifies because right. your future points say right. plan. You know, and, and the other okay. things that you would need. Quick catch. Another one. Uh, oh, this was interesting. Uh, this was on my 13, so it's probably on the new 14. Yeah. In the blue box, the bottom of the first paragraph, I was. I, I, the purpose for which they were assessed, and it says paying the consultant once an appropriation is made by town meeting. So I, I didn't read the whole thing, but does that mean that this consultant doesn't get paid until... So you see the beginning now? Do you, what section are you on? It's in this blue box. Here. Oh, the, oh, okay. See the blue box? Yes. The bot, right in the middle, the last sentence of the first paragraph, it talks about paying a consultant based on town meeting. Now, is that an appropriation that's made in advance? Or does this guy have to wait six this, months? This, this is the general law section. Uh, yeah. So that's what it is what it is. But okay. what we have done is a workaround so that we didn't have to take in engineering deposits right. is we maintain that list of peer review engineers. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we send the applicant out to contract directly with the peer review engineer and pay them directly. Okay. So um, that that um, that really isn't how the applicant may be required to pay an engineering consultant review firm before the review process may begin, uh, or before the review process. It's not exactly how we do it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, now, this, this all just to, I don't mean to go into for a second. This doesn't just apply to us because we also have three other groups that are being involved in the review. Here. Conservation, Building Inspector, and DPW. Right. Just go ahead and build. So conservation, I think, has the, they may have a revolving fund set up. Yeah, we were talking about that in our meeting, and we need to talk to the town treasurer because we're not sure of which is the best way to do it. The Conservation Commission has a process set up that works for them. 
Mm -hmm. They're going to continue to use that. The DPW is the one group that doesn't have a process set up because they're going to be doing inspections, and not only will they do inspections during the initial permit process, they may be doing, be, they are required to do follow-up inspections two, three, five years from now after the project has been completed. And we're not quite sure, Chris has an idea of how he wants to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. We, we need to talk to the town treasurer to find out the best way to do that. We're not sure if it's going to be a revolving fund or some kind of an enterprise fund or what's going to be, what is the best for them to handle and for the town to take care of them. So, um, there's, there's, a, there's a few people, a few, few groups involved in this fee schedule yeah. here. Yeah, I th and, and I think this is just generally the town, um, you probably adopted this um, to allow boards such as the Planning Board, Board of Health, Conservation Commission, ZBA, to um, collect fees for third party review. Um, and that's specifically to address that. Um, so if this is elsewhere in your bylaw, which I think it is, um, in the zoning bylaws, I mean, you. I think it's just more for information. Yeah, this, this, this is not. This, this is, is not in a, the this bylaw. Is just a, this is what the law is, um, Mark. Not a matter. Of, it's not debatable. Right. It, 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 it's if you want to deal with this, this is what you got to follow. Right. And you've already seen this, and you've already found a way around it. So that's that's kind of mm -hmm. water over the dam. Okay. My last item is just housekeeping that I'm sure your people would have, your staff would have caught, and I think on what you handed out, it's on page 17. Uh, so section 7, you get down to C, which is inspections, um, and it bleeds over to 18. There's just paragraph number in there. Um, is out of sync. I think it's just probably the f formatting of the document, but it's it it ends with C, and then there's a bunch of unnumbered it goes paragraphs. To, okay. Yeah, it goes one, two, three, four. Oh, and then it goes to C, B, and then it goes back to B. Yeah. So that just is some housekeeping there, okay. which I say is minor, but it also is important that it's important. properly structured yeah. for for reference and some and what 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 is yeah. subordinate to what later. Correct. So that was just, that was all I had. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I handed out the um, shifting gears to the general planning board rules and reg. Um, this is what I was able to find. It looks like the document has been updated since 2015. And I don't know if the board has discussed this since then. Um, and, you know, I, I, I provided this to the board because obviously there's comments here. And um, if there was any sort of general consensus on what was produced back when um, and how far you went with so I don't. You're right. We have not really okay. dealt with this. Uh, what we did adopt was a separate uh, so, village center overlay design guidelines. Okay. So I don't know if they were in here. They were not. Um, okay. So what what I was able to find and what I shared in that email was I found a separate. Well, well there's a limited business design review guideline. I don't know. No, That's not the same. Um, but um, home occupations and inclusionary zoning had some rules and regs that were kind of in its own document. So I incorporated into this. Um, and then I um, also put a comment here that maybe this is where you'd also want the erosion control, um, the stormwater rules and regs. So then you would have one. Yeah document that has all the I mean this will balloon to more than 60 70 pages but yeah I think some of this um, for example the home occupations I think a lot of that was maybe just started by copying the bylaw into it okay and um, I think we were just what we started 
or the approach we took was that we tried to identify each section of the bylaw that specifically authorized the adoption of regulations. Uh -huh. And I think then, um, and I'm not sure who I was working with at the time, but I think we might have just wholesale slapped in the bylaw itself as a placeholder. So um, it was not intended to go forward that way as an adoptable regulation. It was just to be a, um, a discussion point. point. Okay. Okay. So. Um, so then maybe what for for the future work product um, going through this, um, and I could. I don't know if it's more useful to. Because it looks like, you know, the, the work that was done in regards to the general um, stuff is consistent mm -hmm. with most other towns that adopt rules and rights. Um, it usually lays out the responsibilities of the various boards, um, site plan, a review, special permit, what you need for those items, um, and how a meeting is run. Um, and then maybe look at at the the other sections and provide some either recommendations or ideas of how to address those yes. um, and then also find i guess village center because you that should be in here mm, probably not only because that's a, that's its own standalone book with the idea that if somebody came in and wanted to do a development within the village center you would just give it's, that a, to it's them. A, like a folder or a mini book we could hand them and say this is the guidelines. Okay. Because that is, I don't think it's called regulations, it's actually called Village Center Overlay Guidelines, if I'm okay. correct. So for Mark and Mike, uh, what we're talking about is on top of Chapter 48, which is the zoning bylaw, which goes on for pages, and on top of our Hadley zoning bylaw, which goes on for a number of pages, the planning board has authority under general laws to adopt regulations and in many separate bylaw units that we've adopted there is authority to adopt regulations and the idea is that as we go through our day processing site plan approval if we find something that is being done wrong every time or something that we'd like to see done the same way every time. We have the opportunity to adopt a regulation that will say, okay, henceforth, all supporting material has to be on eight and a half by 11 paper. So we don't have to go through a mental checklist each time. And some, some of the bylaws could be just as simple as a checklist. This is what we expect to see from you. Um, but we have uh, never really written all of that down. And uh, that's the goal here, that there, there are some things we come in, you probably have heard Jim or me or Joe say the same things to every new applicant. Um, be sure to uh, get the two sets of labels, addresses on mailing labels. Um, those are things that we, we've just become so used to saying them. They are part of the process. But it doesn't specifically, it says in the zoning bylaw, or the uh, state statute, 40A, that you have to send a notice of a public hearing to abutters, and you have to send a notice of decision to the abutters. But it doesn't say anywhere that you have to have it on um, either pre-addressed envelopes or mailing labels. Uh, we've adopted that as an informal regulation based on what many other communities do, mm -hmm. but um, it's just it's sort of second nature to say that, and Jim has added it to the bottom of the uh, site plan approval application. So it's written down in a couple of places, but we don't have a explicit statement that we want this. We also, uh, going forward, are probably going to want to adopt a specific standard for electronic filings, whether it be PDF or some kind of GIS format. And that's something we can put in the regulations. Mm -hmm. And then we can hand an applicant two or three page 
pages in which, of a checklist, if anything, that they can proceed with. Um, otherwise, we end up telling them things, maybe getting callbacks, and then telling them, oh, you forgot something. Um, we might still do that, but at least we'd all be working off the same checklist. I don't think we're going to change the idea that you must file at a planning board hearing for the simple reason that we want to make sure that we see it because if they miss something, the town clerk isn't going to go through the checklist. And to Bill's point, they file downstairs, we don't know it, now we get in touch with them, and it's all lost time that to them is critical many times. And we don't want to delay people unnecessarily, and it's better to just delay them two weeks from a public from our regular scheduled meeting that to delay them, you know, how do we find these people? You know, you need this, you need this, you need this. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, you know, or I missed it or whatever it might be. And going forward, we'll also do things like add our, um, we can add our application form to the website. We haven't done that yet. Uh, so th there are ways we can get more information out there. But basically, we're just trying to, and I think this is also consistent with uh, the SWOT analysis we did, that getting this written down, well, we are here to write it down. Um, because this is, we've developed things that work. And um, if we could write it down now, it'll be easier for you in a few years, a few decades. <laughs> when it's just Joe and me. <laughs>
public hearing when people are coming to the clerk's office to look for the plans that the ad said would be in the clerk's office. And then we find out that Mr. Engineer has not filed anything, neither fee nor plans. And then, uh, then we tell people, well, you didn't follow our rules. We'll see you in a month. You're continued. Um, yeah, I think that was just kind of some general guidance that I needed to okay. um, to assist with how the document should look and what needs to be added. I think as is six, uh, does the board usually um, use any additional copies to submit to other departments? I, so I plan approval. We get like, I would say, I think it's nine copies. Okay. And I give copies to, let's see, one selectman, building inspector, um, DPW, DPW Public Board Safety. of Health, Conservation Commission, and Historical doesn't get them anymore because they don't want to take, they, they're not going to, they don't want to win part of the process, but it does say the Board of Health should get a copy. Um, sometimes they put a copy, depending what it is, in the town clerk's mailbox. So the distribution list for site plan approval is in the site plan the approval bylaw. Okay. okay. Uh, the other thing we're exploring, uh, there have been a couple of presentations on permitting software right. that oh. would allow it to be loaded and then you know, one digital copy shot out to multiple people with a way for them to acknowledge they've reviewed it. Um, and there is also a um, program called Laserfiche, mm -hmm. which will, again will involve having, that's not so much a permitting flow software, but just a big file cabinet that people can look at and see what, what, has, what, been what has been filed. filed. Uh, we're not operational with either. Yeah. We have, uh, we're, we're, we are ramping up for laser fish. We are still evaluating permitting software vendors. Okay. Yeah, and th th I mean, that's going to be important as far as your process when you, like, would the planning board be aware other than maybe getting an email on the planning board? you know, the planning board email that there is an application that was submitted, but I guess would it be left to whoever opens that email to determine whether or not a planning application is completed? Or is it more so, I mean, and again, this is yep. theoretical because you don't have something electronic, right. but I think, you know, it's just something to be mindful of. There's a variety of, of what the presentation that I saw was a variety of, uh, softwares that do that mm -hmm. and they range from everything that you can't help but do something with it to you could easily miss it yeah okay. and there's pluses and minuses to all of them that range all over the place so they're trying to find something that meets our need without being ridiculously burdensome Yep. So what if that's <laughs> possible what's driving it at the moment is inspection services once permitting a permitting package. A lot of building departments are moving in that direction, and I think it, it's one of those business-friendly type things that are done um, to allow also um, people getting their building permits and seeing where they are in the process. Um, why didn't this department sign off on it? So I'm going to follow up with this department, and it's just kind of keeping tabs on all those various mm -hmm. internal processes that happen. Um, but I, you know, I think it's a good idea because it, it keeps track of things. Do you have any favorite permitting softwares? I have to think about that. Um, I've worked in towns that have had it, and um, I've worked in towns where I was the permitting software and had to try to document everything that was filed. Um, it was easier for me because I was just one person and I knew exactly what I needed. Um, but um, let me get back to you. I think there, there, there were two that I really liked when I was working in uh, larger government settings um, okay. that were yeah. very helpful. I'd be happy to share that with the people who yeah. are leading the, spearheading the 
Yeah. Where, where they, in they, they initial were, stage. Um, I've taken a stand as from first on the planning board that because our role in its overall thing and it's so many much larger requirements for other boards that more than likely whatever you pick we can deal with yeah as opposed to saying well we want this we want this it's like you know we're to be you know real but we're small fish in this pond from what we're doing with them yeah we do site plan approval stuff like that but the building department and the treasurer and administrator the ones that really have much larger um, requirements mm -hmm. so if it meets their requirements as opposed to you know well we, we can't meet the planning for stuff well you know we'll learn to live with it um, last question has the board or the town taken a stance on issuing permits to those that have issues with back payments of taxes yes yes okay that's good to know no permit no taxes no permit okay and every once in a while we for the planning board, what I do is every time somebody comes in for site plan approval, uh -huh. I have a list that I send out the notice to. It's a very little, there's a left, it's actually a little application form. And I put down that this is the applicant, this is the property, this is what they want to do. If anybody has outstanding fees, let me know. And <coughs> most of the boards will reply, you know, the one, like the, the uh, treasurer's department, the accountants, and somebody else will say, no, we don't have any. Okay. Um, once in a while, they do, and they let the person know that you're not going to get a special permit until you pay your taxes or, or whatever fee it might be. Okay. And it's worked a couple times. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. All right. Okay. So we appreciate your civic engagement. None of us are wearing the sticker because there was no vote. In yeah. <laughs> Where did you yeah, I, made you I, I live in East Hampton. Oh, okay. Um, I was commuting from Sturbridge only two months ago, so I'm very glad that I'm local. Oh, so you moved, you moved here. Yeah, so you, now, I'm, now I'm local, now. which yeah. is wonderful. Um, that makes your commute a lot simpler every day to work. For every, for every town that I have to go to. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... What I can do is get some draft to you for whenever the next time you'll have me. Um, I'll swear, tell Patty, um, make those small changes that we discussed tonight, um, as well as incorporate anything. I think we're going to need some guidance on that treasurer, um, or that, um, the language in regards to that um, section about the money. Yes. Yeah, I got to... Um... Once we get the regulations, I'm going to talk to the DPW to see, to get trying to, try to, how do you want to do this? Because you've got really two schedules, the one during construction, which is pretty easy, right. and the one post-construction where you need to do follow-ups on a routine or yearly basis, whatever it might be. Right. How do you want to handle those? Yeah. Okay. And maybe I'll um, also just send a follow-up to Chris. Um, yeah, just so that, you know, because the, the, the regulations have to be filed with a clerk before you advertise mm -hmm. for a public hearing. When I was talking to Patty, um, I don't know what your board, your meeting schedule is in December, but I imagined that it would be probably... Right the, now, you don't we, have, we have nothing scheduled. Okay. So, well, well, yeah. I mean, it so would you be. Want to, you want to come back and meet meet with us? With, with I don't think I need. I mean, unless the, when we share the the regulations, unless there's some massive question um, in its final version, um, I don't know if it's necessary to meet um, other than um, coming to be here to uh, discuss. At a public hearing, third or seventeenth. Yeah, so our next meeting will be uh, December third and December seventeenth. Because I, I told Patty that we would, I would try, I would want to try to get it for the, for that first meeting in December, but then that would mean that you would need it, or it would need to be posted within yeah. two weeks. 
We, I mean, we can. You want to try for the seventeenth or ensure? I, I would think the, the soonest we could get a public hearing for the regulation would be the seventeenth. Okay. Okay. More than likely, um, I just feel we're going to be pressed too much to do it for them. It would be January seventh. That's probably going to be a much. Let, let's try for January seventh. Okay. That way we can have a regular scheduled meeting with you on the seventh, and we can hold a public hearing on the same date. Sounds good. And get them both done. Achievable goals. Yeah. <laughs> Did the word attractive make it in the final cut? No. <laughs> <laughs> in the bylaw? Yeah. It so. went into definitions as see. determined by Mark by <laughs> Mo, Mo, Mike Sarsinski. So it's un untouched. As objectively determined. <laughs> Thank you, board. Um, so then, will I see you, I guess? One second. All right. In the yeah, new year. That makes the most sense. Yeah. I mean, okay. we, we run into the holidays. Yeah, you know, that kind yeah. of takes away. We well, got you know, Thanksgiving, well, Thanksgiving this month, and then Christmas and New Year's next month, essentially. Okay. Yeah, and I will um, send things as they're completed. Um, so if there is any need to call me in on the regular scheduled meeting on yep. any of those days in December, let me know. So you're thinking of possible public hearing for adoption of bylaws? On 1-7 and have Ken back for the third regular PBC, PBC meeting on that thing. The new boss arrived and is she, yeah, at she, the helm? And she, she's at the helm. She started on October 7th. So okay. she's been there um, almost a, mo a month um, tomorrow, on uh, Thursday. Um, yeah, she is different. Yeah, it's it's very different, different. style. Different. Um, yeah. She, um, I guess this is a, a time to plug um, CPTC, Citizens Planner Training Collaborative. She actually attended um, that. It was a, a session taught by uh, Larry Smith, who talked about rules and regs, actually, yeah. um, and she attended that. So she's getting her feet wet in in a lot of the different areas of work that we do. Um, which is, it, it's good. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Thanks for your guidance. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Thank if you I don't... Thanksgiving and a good Christmas. And, and a good year, year, right? right? Yeah. Right around the corner. Thanksgiving only three weeks away. Holy cats. Do, do we have anything lined up on the 19th? No. no? Not right now. We'll probably still go ahead and have a business meeting. Yeah. But, uh, nothing, so so nothing is walking. Same thing. Yeah. Right now we have nothing scheduled for January for December, but that's something to change before it comes in on the nineteenth. Right, have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, I had put Megan's way down for possible further discussion. I did speak with David Nixon. And in addition to whatever the glitch was with getting the as-built plan circulated, um, apparently Macon's Way, the proprietors did not file a meets and bounds description of the road. Okay. And they have not filed the written easements we had asked for. Okay. So that is definitely off for annual for special town meeting okay, yeah, for annual. okay. the uh just certain information the there we've had from the town administrator and from the council on aging's council on aging we've got some emails and some information there have it they have a senior tax work off position which means people over seniors whatever that might mean can uh do tasks for the town that are approved and such and such and they can get up to five hundred dollars a year I maximum yeah. depending the you, you gotta you gotta meet certain income requirements to be able to do this but you can do certain tasks for the town and work so many hours I've got what I forgot what the fees are and all the rest of the stuff but it's called a senior tax work off program where you actually work for the town and the money that you would theoretically earn comes off of your taxes. So you never see any coming thing coming in, but it's it's reduced your taxes is are reduced tax by is it taxable income? I don't know that. <laughs> I have no idea of how that works. 
Um, and if the money's taken, you're able to reduce your property tax by up to $500. And I thought that uh, the applications or the work requests are due this Friday. I got some brief job descriptions from the Senior Council on Aging because they're the ones that really administer this after the town has approved the positions, is that we could probably use someone to start scanning our drawings and putting them in electronically. And I just want to let everybody know that that was my intent to actually request a person to do that. They want to know what are the requirements of doing this, so I wanted to know what, what your job description looked like, because I don't want to make some overly simple or overly complex. And so I've got a couple from the town from the senior tax, they've got a document scanner person, and ours is a, theirs basically talking about scanning this kind of stuff. Ours are going to be full size drawings. Yeah, I was wondering, do we have an oversized scanner? Yes, we, do, we have a full size scanner. We have an east, east size scanner. Oh, nice. We bought that last year. Nice. And we, we scanned a few drawings into it. Um, it's not difficult to use, but it's like anything, you're working, you're not working with a piece of paper, you're working with a drawing that's, you know, three feet, you know what I'm talking about. They can be a bit complicated to use because you've got to go into each drawing. Tell them where you want to save it, how to save it, um, give it a name, stuff like that. So you've got to have some computer skills. Once you learn how to use it, you know, a couple of drawings, it's it's like anything. It's okay, that's not so bad. But the first couple, you you know, and they would be doing this over time, probably on a, uh, you know, without much supervision, um, except to get them started. And uh, you know, so I said, well, I'd request somebody. I think you'd get up to. I've got the maximum hours they have per position, um, but I say even if we get whatever we get scanned, is it's a help. Yeah. So that was my intention to get something in and get the request. Yeah, so even if we get somebody, great. If not, well, we'll keep trying. Yeah, I think the uh, last round of this, uh, there was someone who was eligible to uh, participate and. Uh, she spent some time working in the treasurer's office, stuffing envelopes, and uh, some time working with Park and Rec. Um, I guess the, I think they're looking for like up to eight or eight or nine, eight to ten people before they understand. So they're looking for a few people to give a hand doing different things if they can get the uh, tasks. So and we certainly could keep somebody busy mm -hmm. easily. Okay, just let everybody know. And we don't need an executive session, so that's correct. Yeah, even if they didn't want to give them access to all the town servers, they could have them scan it on. To oh, they would just scan ours. They would just scan they it into our computer, and, and, and one of us would just take and onto uh, a thumb drive, and then we could right. file it. That that, that would be the intent. That would be the easiest way to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That way, if they corrupt something and make a mess or something, right. it's only going to be that big. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Anybody? Motion to adjourn. Second. Third. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.